Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is the player ratings from tonight's game between Slovakia and Republic of Ireland. The Euro 2020 semi-final playoff, which we obviously lost on penalties. Um, but like overall, I thought it was a really good performance. I know people go, well, well, we, we, we drew nil-nil in normal time of playing. But we showed signs of really good football. It was the most enjoyable match of, of Ireland I've watched in a long, long time. We mixed between fluidity in playing football as well as defensively looking quite solid. Um, so I guess really Darren Randolph, I'm going to give a 6-2. I thought he didn't have a whole lot to do, but when he did, he did it well. Made a good save in the first half. Um, probably would have got a better rating had he saved a couple more penalties, but their penalties were very good. So I don't think there was anything he could have really done. Doing his job very well. And, um, you know, usually you can rely on Darren. In this, this case, we did throughout the... I suppose the, the 120 minutes we could rely on him. And then penalties is the lottery. Some days you get lucky, some days you don't. Then uh, right back, Matt Darty, I'm going to give a 7 to it at times. Going forward, he he showed a lot of times what he's capable of doing. And we haven't seen him doing an Irish shirt, probably because he hasn't played that much for Ireland. But um, and due to last month, he was pretty much coming in off the back of a holiday. So I think we will start seeing the best of him playing for Ireland very soon. And uh, really enjoyed his performance tonight. I thought at times some players weren't on the same wavelength as him when he was trying to give the ball and he'd run past him to get on the overlap. People weren't seeing the overlap and they were turning him back into different areas. So I don't think that was Matt's fault. But I did think a lot of our best chances came through Matt originally and uh, over the other side with, with Ender as well. So I felt as though our fullbacks were getting very much more into the game. Um, I think that's because our midfielders allow the, mid the fullbacks to get forward. So... For me, I'm going to give Matt a 7. So I, th I feel as though he was very, very good up until the later in the second half. They brought in a sub that seemed to kind of stop giving Matt the space. Then he kind of went a little bit quiet and then he picked up a, a knock. It looked like a hamstring strain, but he played on anyway. And he obviously took the penalty then and missed the, the penalty for hitting the bar. But I don't think that overall affects his performance in terms of the ratings that I've given. Then um, Enda Stevens, a uh, left back. I'd have to give a seven to as well. I thought he was outstanding, getting up and down the line, and again played a lot, uh, played a big part in a lot of our chances. I felt anyway. Um, he created a good chance for Alan Brown, and then I think he was, there was another one where he got in and passed it out to the right. Then and someone else took a shot. Can't can't remember off the top of my head now, but um, there was a couple of chances where he got in. and He was our main threat, and it was strange to see him in the centre forward position at, from a left back, but. I've gone for a seven for Ender, and I think I think it's justified. People might say more, people might say less, but you can let me know yours in the comments. Um, Shane Duffy, I've given nine to. I mean, my man of the match. I thought he was outstanding. Um, he won everything. He totally made up for last month's um defensive, I suppose, lapses, and that goal line clearance. Oh, the only thing he didn't do right tonight was score. He can't be, you know, relied upon to score every single time he plays. But I think what you will get from Shane Duffy is if, if fit when he's playing and and fit and sharp is a really really top level centre half and he seems to go up different levels for Ireland. And I feel as though um he almost has been trying too hard in the in the last few games. And look, even on the ball, he looks a lot more comfortable. I, I, I recall a chance he set up. For Didzy, who actually played in Callum Robinson, which ended up being a chance for Conor Howard and it was cleared off the line. But that was just from one pass for Dizzy to get up almost in the in the centre midfield position and he was able to run down at their defence and do a little bit of skill and play Callum Robinson in and then it ultimately fell to Alan Brown and Conor Howard in. But that came from, from Duffy's ball. I thought he'd done everything right tonight that, that was called upon from him. Um, a real captain's performance. John Egan beside him. I've given John a seven. I think he was very, very solid. Did his job when he needed to. But I just thought Duffy got himself about the pitch a bit more. And that's the only reason why he's got, I suppose, a higher rate. And then, and obviously the goal line clearance. But I thought Egan was solid alongside Duffy there. And they kind of showed why the two of them are starting and, and, and will re remain the number one defensive partnership. I think the two of them are too good and better than anyone else that we have there. So to keep them there... Um, and keep that defensive partnership going for the next number of years. I think that could be our defensive partnership for the next five years. Maybe not that long, but they're definitely an option there. Um. So yeah, that's that's my defenses. Um. 
ratings. Then moving into midfield, I'm going to give Howerhin um, a 5.5. I didn't think he had his best game. I didn't think he was absolutely horrendous either. But I think he could have played a bit better, in my opinion. Um, some of the times he was just caught, caught on the ball and he could have been doing better things. But all in all, I felt when he did something right, then he went and done something wrong, kind of counteracted what he had done. And I think you watch him for Villa and he's a far better player. Whereas that's the players he's playing with at Villa, I'm not sure. Um, it could be that make him look a lot better or they see um, they see the runs that he's trying to play players in. But I just thought at times tonight, um, he was just a little bit rash, more than he needed to be. And um, again, it's not a dig on him or anything like that. Um, you know, I like the guy personally, but it's just how I see it, saw the game and I didn't think that uh, he scored quite well. Uh, James McCarthy, I'm going to give a 6-2. I thought he handled Hamshik very well while he was on the pitch and uh, done everything right while he, while he was in there, scanned, allowed the full-backs to get forward, done everything that a defensive midfielder was supposed to do, I think. Um, probably went a little bit under the radar by most people, but I think if you're looking for a defensive midfielder, just come along and scan everything. That's what he gives you, and that's what he did tonight, and I think that was his best performance in an Irish shirt for a long time, and that's just due to injuries and, um, I suppose, fitness. Then Jeff Hedrick, I'm going to give uh, 5.5 as well. My, no, I'm going to give him a 6 because I thought he'd done a, a couple of things better than Howerton. But again, he's one of these players where it looks like he has what it takes and you think he's going to go up a level and his confidence is going to breed more. And then he does one good thing and then he does one bad thing. He just needs to find that level of consistency. Um, And I know a lot of people scream at the screen now and saying like, what? he's nearly 28 years old or probably is 28 now at this point that he needs consistency he should have it already i know um but i think he needs to start finding it sooner he could find himself out of the team and someone like a uh, jason knight or something could come in there and start taking his his spot because i'm struggling to see what he's offering the team i thought he started really brightly but then fizzled out as the game went on i mean his high press was really good and all these things and there was times where he's picking out passes but he seems to be like almost afraid to shoot from the edge of the box as well picks up the position and runs with the ball and then gets to the edge of the box and looks absolutely lost for ideas so you'd like to hope that maybe um he starts getting a bit of confidence and starts shooting a bit more but uh that's the, the, that's the midfield and then onto the strikers I thought mclean i'm gonna call him a striker in this instance uh, left wing i thought I, look, I'll give him a, I'll give him a six. It'd be maybe a bit generous with a six, but uh, I thought he'd done what he had to do defensively. Um, offensively, didn't do a whole lot. Didn't, uh, didn't do a whole lot. I'd have preferred to have Aaron Connolly in there. Obviously, with the COVID situation, that wasn't to be. But I think if maybe we had Aaron Connolly tonight, we probably would have won that game. But anyway, look, I thought McLean done what he, done what he had to. But I think his days of starting are are going to be behind him now. He just didn't show a lot of um, sharpness at all. I don't know where it's because he hasn't been playing a whole lot with Stoke. Maybe that's the reason. But uh, just thought from McLean, you usually expect more. And uh, just thought he kind of fizzled out as the game went on. And then he was replaced. <coughs> Other managers probably w wouldn't have replaced him. But I, I was glad Stephen did. Um, you know, and Robbie Reddy came on for him. But uh, McGoldrick then, I've given an eight. I thought he was key to most things going well for us going forward. Very unlucky not to get a goal and very unlucky not to get an assist as well. I thought there was a lot of good signs there in the way we were playing and what he was doing. He was coming, getting the ball, coming deep, dropping it off the players and just keep protecting the ball for us and just giving us a breather when there was times where the momentum was against us and he just kind of used his strength in his body and as well as that his skill and cl cleverness and awareness to get away from players. So I think McGoldrick um, deservedly an eight and would be rival in Shane, Shane Duffy for a uh, man of the match, but just think that goal line clearance did it for me. Callum Robinson, 7.5. Thought he showed real good moments. Probably his best performance in an Irish jersey, I would say. Um, I thought he showed good moments, good bits of skill. Thought he looked uh, he looked quite confident tonight, which was great to see. Um, although he didn't get the goal that he probably, his performance probably deserved, but you could say that about a few people tonight. Um, so yeah, I've given him a 7.5. Then the substitutes, Alan Brown, I give him a 7 too. I thought he'd done really, really well. Maybe his penalty. Um, people might say, why well, did I give him a 7? Because of his penalty. But look, 
if a keeper goes the other way, that's a good penalty. So, um, yeah, look, I think he played well. He was unlucky not to score, unlucky not to get an assist for Howard in as well. So, yeah, I think I think he's done himself no harm in maybe getting a game against Wales or in the next couple of internationals. He may see Alan Brown stepping up and getting a, a chance there. So, yeah, I think he's, he's done himself um, very well tonight. And usually I don't say that about Alan Brown. I usually kind of question why he's in the team. But today, for me, he showed good signs of what he can do. And he battled well. I thought he got around the pitch well. And, and kind of, you know, when McCarthy went off, we needed someone to kind of get stuck into Hampshire. Kind of times he did. Because Howard was obviously on the yellow as well. Um, Robbie Brady, I'd give him a seven. Thought he got on the ball quite well. Tried to make things happen. Um, but, yeah, ultimately the players around him weren't maybe on the same wavelength as him, as I mentioned with Matt Doherty earlier on. So and he's got a really good penalty as well. So so fair play to him. Um, Howard, I, I I just want to go back to because obviously actually you know what? I'll give Connor Howard a six because he scored that penalty, uh, which was a crucial penalty at the start. So I'm gonna give Connor a, a six. Sorry. So uh, I go back to Brady. His yeah his penalty, and then Odeuda. When he came on, I thought he'd done well. He almost got an assist for Adam Brown who hit the post. Um, thought maybe he should have been brought on sooner and. Maybe he could have affected the game a little bit more, but because he didn't, he didn't get a whole lot to do. But that's just the way it is, unfortunately. But uh, that's that's really been it. I've, I've Shane Long down there, but I'm not going to give him a, a rating because he wasn't on the pitch that long. And it'd be fairly unfair if I gave him a rating. So maybe I'll just give him a six and just kind of keep it consistent. Um, but yeah, let me know your player ratings in the comments. And don't forget to check out my aftermatch reaction. Gary's three talking points and his aftermatch reaction. Um, as a... Uh, we go forward and yeah, um, look forward to the next game against Wales. Anyway, I'll uh, speak to you soon. I'm a bit deflated, so uh, yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and all that jazz. And we'll speak to you all soon. Thanks for watching.